Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we learned that the kinetic energy increase or decrease is linear with the height change. Just like potential energy decreases linearly with the change in height, kinetic energy does as well. So in this example, we have an object that's being shot upwards, directly upwards. It has the initial velocity V sub naught and therefore initial kinetic energy, kinetic energy sub naught. And when let go, it will reach a particular height called h max. Now, when the object has reached half the height, where h is half h max, what will be the kinetic energy at that moment and what will be the velocity at that moment? Well, what we have to realize again is the linear relationship between the change in kinetic energy and the change in potential energy versus height. So, if on the vertical axis we put energy, and on the horizontal axis, we put height. And so this would be uh, h max, so that's this distance right here. And at that point, if we're at h max, we would have potential energy, the maximum amount of potential energy we can have. So that means if we draw a little box here, like so, you can see that this would be the increase in potential energy, and this would then be the decrease in kinetic energy. So potential energy would increase as we're gaining height, and kinetic energy would decrease as we're gaining height. So potential energy starts at zero when we have zero height, and kinetic energy will have its maximum value when we have zero height. And you can see then that at the halfway point, where h is equal to h max, that half the kinetic energy that we had has now be converted into potential energy. So we can say that the kinetic energy will be one half the original kinetic energy that we had when we started, again, because that linear, linear relationship. Now for the second part, we're trying to find the velocity when the object has reached its halfway point. So what we can see is, what we can say is that at the halfway point, at h equals one half h max, you can say that the kinetic energy will be one half the original kinetic energy. And of course, the kinetic energy there will be one half mv squared, the velocity at that moment in time. And that would be equal to one half the initial kinetic energy is one half mv initial squared. So you can see here that we can cancel one half on both sides, we can cancel an m on both sides, and that means that v squared is equal to one half v initial squared, or if we take the square root of both sides, we then have v is equal to, well, that would be one over the square root of two times v initial, or if we calculate that, this would be v is equal to 0 0.707 times v initial. So the interesting part is, even though half of its kinetic energy is lost when you reach the halfway point on the way to the maximum height, you still have 70.7% of the original velocity. So what happens is the velocity decreases initially very slowly, and then the velocity increases much more quickly as you continue to go in height as a function of position, of course. So that's kind of interesting. So there's not a linear relationship between velocity and height, but there is a linear relationship between kinetic energy and height. Again, this illustrates that difference.